student let us begin lectures on machine design part 1 this is lecture number 15 and the topic is design of keys and splines now in last two lectures we have uh, known how to design uh, common types of fasteners namely the knuckle joints or uh, the cotter joints now in those joints mainly the purpose was to transmit a tensile or compressive force from one member to the other but there are cases and many cases in a machine where we have to transmit torque from one shaft to another shaft which are co um, which have the center line the same uh, so <coughs> uh, these are very common things and we have to design a fasteners such that the torque can be transmitted from one member to the other quite efficiently so we are now going to start discussions on keys and splines so these are the again one kinds of fasteners that is the non permanent type of joints where uh, the torque can be transmit, transmitted from one shaft to the other shaft so these are very important things and the design is quite difficult exact design exact analysis is quite difficult but we are going to design um, give some guidelines of the design now let us first come to the basic types of keys so we are going to um, divide the lectures into two parts one is the design of keys and another is design of spines in some books you will find splines are uh, taken to be a member a one kind of keys but for our uh, discussions we are keeping them separate so let us see what are the different types of keys now the purpose of the keys as I said is to transmit torque from one shaft to the other shaft that is if we have a shaft over here then this is one shaft let us think of another shaft which is concentric so these are two shafts where the torque has to be transmitted from this shaft from the inner shaft to the outer shaft the means of doing so is by using the keys now the keys are a small uh, piece of uh, some material which is the same as that of the shaft material where uh, these are normally rectangular in cross sections so here we see that what we do we cut two slots in the uh, in the in both the shafts and then insert one small piece which is known as the keys so here we have cut one keyway and this is key if you if you draw it in further details then what you see is that let us draw the outer shaft the outer shaft here we can get so this is that part of the outer shaft where this key slot is cut the inner shaft again we have another this is the inner shaft where another slot is cut normally these two heights are equal if the total height is h then this is h by 2 h by 2 and so this is the slot for key and we insert a key over here now there is a small clearance a tolerance this is because of the machine fitting so this is a tolerance a very small tolerance that also depends on the keys the dimensions of the keys but there there is some tolerance and so this is so this is how the key looks like in a key slot now this part which is the corner of the keys this part this is now little chamfered that is if you look again in a little more deep 
in a little more details then the keys the keys will look like the cross section so this part which is little chamfered so this angle is almost 45 degree so this is how it looks like near the corner so this is roughly the design of uh, the cross sectional design of the keys now <coughs> the key which i have drawn is one kind of key there are various kinds of keys which uh, use, use the same principle that is uh, there is a slot um, cut within the um, within the shaft and some extra material is inserted such that the firm a, a firm binding is formed now this kind of key which i have drawn is known as the sunk key now there are various kinds of sunk keys one is the rectangular sunk keys so this one and rectangular sunk keys if it is drawn it will look like um, the following so here so this is rectangular in cross section so this is the key but normally there is a taper here so this taper angle let us call it beta now taper angle is such that this is 1 is to 100 this normal taper angle is that so that means tangent of beta is equal to 1 by 100 so this is the normal taper angle and this cross section is rectangle this is normally known as the width denoted by w this is height h and this is the length of the keys now this is the rectangular sum keys if the w equal to h then of course the cross section is square cross section and we call it square sunk keys then parallel sunk keys of course this beta equal to 0 so in that case for the parallel sunk keys for this case beta is equal to 0 that is there is no taper angle now gib head keys this, this term gib you have already come across while joining um, design the quarter joint at least the type of quarter joint which I said there is one joint called uh, gib, gib type jo gib head quarter joint now gib is again gib head keys it looks somewhat like here like the following this is So this, um, this is the front view of the gib head skis. What, what is the purpose of this? This is known as the gib. This part is known as the gib. And what is the purpose? That is to arrest the, uh, th this is normally used in order to, uh, to withdraw or in order to draw out the keys or fix it back. So if you look at the assembly, then it looks like here so so this is the shaft now again this is the shaft and this is another shaft it is difficult to call it shaft but let us call it disc in that sense so we have to transmit torque from this one to that member now what we do we cut this slot over here so we introduce this gib head gib head key so this is the gib head key so this purpose is to this is the key key slot so this purpose is to draw it easily so this is known as gib head key of course 
there will be a taper angle again the taper angle will be 1 is to 100. Then the feather key, feather key is another kind of key where the key is an integral part of one of the shaft either outer shaft or inner shaft and <coughs> the purpose of feather keys is to accommodate axial motions that is if you draw one shaft there may be a key which is integral part of it. So, this is now integral part of the now it may be machined this way or it may be set by set screw it may be screwed here and <coughs> we put another disc which key slot cut into it and then insert. So, you see that if you move it this way that way the uh, the uh, key key provides enough flexibility in moving in axial directions. So, this is the feather keys. Then another kind is the wood rough keys. Now, let me draw the wood rough key. Wood rough key again if this is the shaft Woodruff key is somewhat like this it is a semicircular key now in three dimension it looks like this. So, it has some advantage one advantage is that this key can be fixed in various orientations. So, it can accommodate some misalignment of the uh, of this assembly. So, this misalignment can be taken care of, but it has one drawback the drawback is that there is a deep hole cut into this shaft. So, if you look into the shaft cross section it becomes. So, if this is the shaft cross section then we ha have to cut a deep hole into it. So, when a deep ho hole is cut so this is a slot cut. So, therefore, it reduces the strength of the shaft. So, now the strength of the shaft gets considerably reduced. So, this is one of the disadvantage of the of the woodruff keys. Now, these are roughly the types of sung keys. Now, there, there are other types of keys which I am going to explain one is the saddle key. The saddle key now <coughs> here suppose this is one shaft part of the shaft in a shaft and let me draw the outer shaft this is the outer shaft and here we draw there is a key cut over here similarly over here. Now, here the slot is cut within the outer cylinder. So, therefore, this contact is maintained now this is again square cross section. So, therefore, the contact is maintained because due to the friction force therefore, it is expected that it would not be able to take a large torque. So, the strength a strength of this key is considerably less and it is used for the light load applications. Now, this is one kind of saddle there is another kind of saddle which is a round saddle that is here instead of this 
the flat face we have a curved face and the radius of curvature matching exactly. So now we have another kind of saddle, so this is one kind of saddle, another kind of saddle is that. Another kind of saddle, here the slot is cut such that, I mean this key, key is made such that it actually matches the profile. So naturally the tra torque transmitted is again due to the friction force and therefore it is considerably less. So these are the saddle keys. Now let us come to another type which is known as the tangent keys. Let me draw the tangent keys. Let us draw the inner shaft and the outer shaft. So this is the outer shaft and this one is the inner shaft. Here we draw the tangent key, the tangent key looks like tangent over here but it is grouped this way. So there are two keys, this is one tangent key. Definitely it can provide torque in one direction, you will see that <coughs> If one direction, uh, if the torque is given in some direction, in one direction, then there is a chance of slippage. Whereas if the torque is applied in the opposite direction, then the chance of slippage is quite less. This is avoided by making two offset tangent keys. So the tangent keys, again there are two such tangent keys. with some offset angle, let us say 60 degree angle. Okay. So now it can transmit torque in both the directions. So these are the tangent keys. Sometimes we use the round keys. Now how do they look like? Let me draw the round keys, they as the name suggests they are round in shape. So let us say that we want to fix one shaft, to another shaft. Then what we do, we drill a hole over here and then place a key. So if you look from the side, then it looks like this is the inner shaft, this is outer disc and the key is well here. So this is round keys. Now what is the advantage of round key? Here the round key, the main advantage is that this is drilled after the final assembly. So we can take the uh, this advantage that uh, the alignment can be done properly. Also it can withstand quite high amount of load. So the capacity is quite large as well as the alignment could be fairly uh, acceptable. Now these are the different types of keys. Now we have to go to the design of this key that will do as a next, next task. So let us now come to the design of keys. We are going to demonstrate the design taking on first the parallel only the sung type keys. We take first the uh, parallel keys and then the taper keys. So let us first concentrate on the parallel keys. So here this is This is the inner shaft. And we have the outer shaft 
over here. So, this is the part of the outer shaft and we have a parallel key over there. Now, <coughs> so this is the key and this height is the geometry of the key. This height is h by 2 and this is w. Now, w is sometimes taken to be almost equal to d by 4 where d is the diameter of the inner shaft. So, this is the rough estimate of the uh, w. Then what are the forces suppose we want to apply we want to transmit torque here. So, therefore, when we apply a torque then a force is experienced. So, there will be a force over here and another force on the key. So, if you draw it then on this part there is a force and on this part there is a force the magnitude of force being f and f. So, what is the value of f? That again depends on your m. So, therefore, f will be equal to m divided by d by 2. Then we have to check for the design. Now, let me uh, look at the key solely on the key and try to find out the design. So, this is key and it is subjected to force F, force F. <coughs> this distance of course, is W and this is H total H, H by 2. So, therefore, you see if you look at the at the total sections then it becomes so this from this half it it is subjected to pressure such that the net force is is f now <coughs> then there are two kinds of stress stresses develop one is the crushing stress so the crushing stress will be equal to sigma compressive stress will be equal to f divided by the total surface over which the bearing uh, pressure or the contact pressure occurs that is h by 2 times l where l is the length of the keys. There will be the shear stress and shear stress will take place along this surface. So, the total shear force is again f and the shear stress is equal to shear stress is equal to total force divided by area which is equal to w times the l. So, these are the expressions. Now, in order to have a design good design then sigma c must be less than the allowable compressive stress that is the bearing crushing stress and tau must be less than tau allowable. Now, <coughs> once we have designed a key then we go for checking this, but one way of designing this key is now to compare the two strengths. Now, we have to, we have to define the strength. Now, strength of the key is the, um, is the maximum torque that can be that can be transmitted from one shaft to the other shaft. Definitely it depends on sigma c allowable. So, if we consider the uh, strength due to crushing, so crushing strength of the key that means the maximum torque that can be applied while sigma c becomes equal to sigma allowable that is the allowable crushing stress. So, now in that case the design procedure will be
sigma c is therefore f is equal to h by 2 l times sigma c which is equal to sigma c allowable and m this is let us let me call it crushing strength that is the maximum torque that ki, that can be trans, transmitted that is equal to f times d by 2 and what about so this is one form now <coughs> the shearing st shear strength that is the maximum torque that can be transmitted while tau reaches the value tau allowable is equal to is, is can be taken to be the following that is f is equal to omega w l times tau allowable and therefore m shear is equal to w l tau allowable times d by 2. Now a normal way of designing is to equate this strength that is we want that the strength in in uh, shear should be equal to the strength in against crushing. So now m s equal to m c that gives that gives h by l h by 2 times l times sigma c allowable times d by 2 equal to w l d by 2 tau allowable. Now if we take uh, the rough estimate that is w is almost equal to equal to d by 4 then what we get is the following that is that is here the d by 2 d by 2 cancels and ultimately when we use that then we get uh, the following results even l l and l here cancels and we get the uh, usual expressions between w and h once we write that then it becomes w is equal to h by 2 sigma c a divided by tau allowable. Now normally sigma c a divided by, by tau allowable is almost equal to 2. So it is it cannot be less than 2. So therefore w is taken to be equal to h. So this is the this is again this key is the square key. So in the square key of course we have approximately the strengths are equal against crushing and, uh, and shear. Now how to design <coughs> the length? Now this length can be designed from the strength considerations of the shaft as well as the key. Then the strength of the shaft is taken to be the following that is the maximum torque that can be transmitted <coughs> the maximum torque can be transmitted this is equal to tau if you consider this shaft then the maximum torque can be transmitted is tau is m divided by pi by 16 d cube for the maximum value this is tau allowable. Now let me call by prime when we talk of the shaft. Now <coughs> the strength of the shaft is pi by 16 times d cube times tau allowable prime. Then we can decide L the value of this uh, length that is equating m and m s. So what we do that we equate m equal to m s 
and when we do that we get the following expressions that is that is pi by 16 d cube tau allowable prime is equal to the shear w l d by 2 tau allowable. If tau allowable prime and tau allowable they are taken to be same. Now, we assume that tau allowable prime is tau allowable because they are made of roughly of the same material and we consider w is roughly equal to d by 4 this is the usual way of designing then l will be equal to 1.4 l will be equal to uh, the so the relationship will be l will be equal to 1.57 times d if you do this calculation so ultimately what you get is the following that is from this expressions we get L equal to about pi by 2 d which is almost equal to 1.57 d. So, this is the minimum length required and if you have this length then the uh, strength of the shaft will be equal to the strength of the uh, keys as far as shear is concerned. So, in this analysis we have equated all the strength that is the maximum uh, capacity of this shaft to transmit load from um, uh, maximum capacity of the shaft or and the keys for transmitting load from one member to the other. So, this is one way of designing the keys, but if you go for for uh, the taper keys then the analysis becomes quite complicated. What we see here let us check the design for the taper keys. Now, what we have there is this is the taper key and if you have this cross section then it is the cross section. So, therefore, once it is fixed then we have few forces one is this normal force F 1 another is normal F 2 and then the friction force. Now, here for the taper keys normally the uh, mode of transfer is through frictions. So, what we can draw is this is the shaft where this is the outer shaft is drawn over here. So, this is the inner shaft this is the outer shaft and there is the key normally there is a clearance. So, therefore, the the torque is transmitted over here. So, now if you look at the key then there will be the friction between these two surfaces and this friction force will act. So, therefore, the friction force will act on the on the outer shaft and here it will act on the inner shaft in the opposite directions. If you draw the if you draw the free body diagram of the key then there will be friction force here and friction force in that directions. So, that depends on the normal pressures. So, this is mu times f and mu times f. So, normal pressures will exist. Hence, the maximum torque that can be transmitted will be equal to the torque will be equal to mu times f times the diameter by 2 that is the radius. So, this is the maximum torque 
that can be transmitted from the taper keys. But this analysis is not completely, uh, is very conservative that is if you design with this approach then you will have to design very conservatively. Otherwise there are lots of other things which I am going to discuss uh, briefly. But coming to the, our original analysis over here, what we see is that there are two forces. If you draw the free body diagram looking from the, uh, from the side, then you can see there are two forces F1 and F2 and F2 will be equal to F2 is normally the pressure times B or W times L. So, this is the total surface. This, this is W and this is H. So, therefore, the total force F2 is P times W times L and this F1. Now, how does F1 develop? Now, we have to insert this key. Therefore, we need to apply some force from here. Let us say we apply F0 here. Then there will be the, there will be uh, the stress developed and there will be the friction force. Now, it acts like an wedge. So, there will be friction force. This friction force will be mu times F1 and this will be again mu times F2. On this side, so if you draw the cross sections, then again we have one component of F1, but there will be one friction force acting over here. So, there may be one friction force here, which is equal to mu times F1 and there may be friction, the opposite friction force mu times F1. So, these are the free body diagram, this, uh, these are all the forces on the, on the keys. Once we make the, the analysis that is write down all the equations, then what we get is that So, F2 is P, the maximum pressure can be taken that is the pressure within this um, pressure on the shaft this P B times L. <coughs> then this angle is beta. So, if you write down all the expressions, ultimately what you get is F0 is equal to twice mu F2 plus this is F2 tangent beta, where we have neglected some terms like mu times cosine beta or mu times sine beta, mu times sine beta, etcetera these are neglected. So, with this analysis we find out the required force F0. Now, if we apply some F0 then of course, F2 will be developed and that will give the required, uh, required uh, pressure because ultimately the torque depends on F2. But the taper keys the design of taper keys is very, very complicated because of the following reason. I Let me explain briefly what are those reasons. You see, there will be always some clearance between this shaft, between these two shafts, inner shaft and let us say this is the outer shaft. Let me so this is the outer shaft and that is the inner shaft. So, this is outer one, so 
and this one is the inner one. Okay. So, there is a clearance over here where the key is fixed. This is the taper key is fixed over here. Now, the friction force acts may be in this directions and that directions. There may be the normal force n and n. They may they make uh, since the distribution is not a priori known. So, therefore, uh, it is difficult to say whether in this to the line of action will be same. So, there is a little offset, but what is important is that there is a contact between two shafts in this region. So, this is the contact region. Right? and the contact pressure develops. So, there is a contact pressure, the exact distribution is difficult to say, but now roughly it is ex expected this the, that this kind of cosine distribution is exist. Now, when it rotates, when you apply a torque over here, so the friction force develops. So, friction force develops. So, now we have two kinds. So, the total torque which can be transmitted is not only due to the uh, due to the key due to the friction between the keys and the and the shafts, but also between the two shafts because of this contact pressure developed. So, the total torque will be maybe the m t the total torque is equal to the torque due to this friction force F, if I call F, this is distributed force plus torque due to mu F, that is this part which I call F, let us say F and F. So, torque due to F and the torque due to n because two n's here if you draw this if you draw the key then in one side the distribution looks somewhat one side this is parallel and another side is a, has taper so if you have a taper then roughly the distribution is somewhat triangular and in that case the normal force here the center, but here the normal force may be somewhere offset here. If the total normal force they are to be balanced, so this is the normal force, but there is one offset between the line of action of these two forces. So, there will be a, a torque de, uh, a moment developed due to the due to the uh, the distribution of the normal force all of them taken together will yield the mt that is mt is really not only due to the key but also due to the friction force between two shafts but while design we make the design very conservative and do not consider this this torque but in real analysis it should come uh, that way now, uh, now we have considered the design of of uh, the rectangle, the parallel keys this way. That is, we have taken the distribution of force. If you take the this is the distribution. If you take this distribution then we have considered the force distributions to be uniform throughout. But it may so happen that the distribution sometimes are taken not uniform, but some triangular distribution something like this. 
here on the other side of course similar distribution will take place. But what is important is that in that case of course the analysis changes, the whole analysis changes and we will have to again see this is the maximum pressure P max and the maximum bearing stress will be equal to P max divided by if this is per unit length. So, P max divided by H by 2 will be the maximum bearing stress that is sigma B will be equal to P max divided by H by 2 whereas, tau max here will be equal to sigma divided by uh, P max divided by this length that is equal to W. And <coughs> we have to again calculate the strength again once due to the uh, shear force, shear stress and another due to the crushing strength. So, the analysis really becomes complicated, they are given in some design handbooks. The analysis of the keys is very, very complicated because no uh, even very exact, n not any exact analysis is, is done so far, only some uh, experiments are carried out with the help of photoelastic, pho photo uh, photoelastic apparatuses that is the photoelastic experiments are carried away, carried out and we have found out roughly the empirical relationship. These are tabulated in various, um, so the design guidelines is uh, guidelines are given in various handbooks. We have to consult different handbooks while designing such keys. So, this is all about the design of keys. Now, let me go to the splines. Then splines are again a number of keys which are integral parts of the shaft. So, what is done is that let us consider the shaft here. So, in one shaft a number of keys are machine. So, they are keyed by these are machine. So, there are number of keys here. So, if you look from the side maybe looks like and these are all integral part of the same shaft. The other shaft which is the outer shaft We will have again key slots cut and they are along the along the axial directions. So, therefore, what is expected that if we mount one shaft to the other then it can slide along the axial directions. The profile of the of the cross sections they they vary there may be straight edges like the rectangular as you see so this kind of edges will be formed also there may be triangular pattern something like this or involute edges now what are involute edges the gear profiles for example are involute gear profiles are possible so involute edges are there. So, involute edges these are the involute edges well um, this is for the external um, external spline. There are few circles involved one is known as this base circle this is the base circle then this another is the pitch circle these circles are useful for um, generating this involute profile 
so pitch circle and this distances this and those distances this is called dedendum and this is addendum so there are terms called dedendum and addendum this distance is the tooth thickness and if you draw a tangent to this base circle then we get an angle this is the pressure angle which is very important for force uh, for force transmitted transmissions and this angle should be chosen such that the maximum torque can be transmitted. Now, what are the uh, advantages of involute edges, involute profiles? One is that, one is that the, uh, the sharp corners are avoided. Here if we use it, then sometimes this, these are chamfered. So, the sharp corners are, are uh, now removed. So, here there is no abrupt change in geometry. Therefore, the stress concentrations may be quite low. But um, and the another advantage is that the involute edges can be generated in very standard way. There, so, there are different standards. Now, these are uh, different kinds of splines. Now, different standards for keys. We have to maintain some standards. So, there are different standards used for these keys. For parallel keys and keyways, we have IS 2048. They, they are all the informations about the width, length and the height are given also tolerance etcetera etcetera. So, when we have to use such keys, then we will have to look up into the standards. Tangential keys 2291 formed in 1963, taper keys also you will find in some books 1974. Anyway, the standards were reaffirmed in 1980. So, this is the latest. But taper keys and keyways <coughs> you will find in 2292, give head keys and keyways in 2293, Woodruff keys and keyways in 2294. So, these are different standards for keys. <coughs> different standards for splines, again for straight slide splines, this is IS 2327 for external involute, external involute is this one where this is the this step and for internal involute this is again the same. So, internal involute and this is external and this is internal, external involute 3665 and internal involute 3665 again. So, these are different standards. Now, let us come to the last part that is effect of keyways. Now, the shift shaft strength factor which is that because of the keyways, the shaft strength of transmission of the torque gets reduced and it gets E equal to 1 minus 0.2 times W by D minus W is the width of the keys and minus 1.1 times H by D is the height of the key. Now, <coughs> the strength factor is the strength that is the maximum torque bearing capacity T max without key that is this this is with key without key and this when divided by T max with key this gives the value E. So, therefore, the uh, strength gets reduced by some factor. Similarly, the angular twist factor that is the uh, the angle by which a twisting takes place, you remember the well known formula for the twisting of a shaft, the twist angle twist it increases by some factor. Again this is empirical relationship and this is equal to 1 plus 0 0.4 times W by D plus 0 0.7 times H by D. Again it depends on W and H. That is <coughs> the angle by which the shaft will rotate theta, it increases. So, theta max that is uh, the maximum angle theta max with key divided by theta max without key, this is given by this 
factor k theta. So, these are the things which are to be considered while designing a key. Now, we come to the uh, conclusions of this lecture. We have learned how to design a key way and a key. There are various kinds of keys. There is another thing which is very similar to key, but it is not key and it is uh, much more uh, longer and has much more strength. This is known as splines. They are very, very effective and very much used for transmitting torque from one shaft to the other shaft. But there are uh, different advan various advantages associated that is the strength of the shaft decreases because of the keys as well as the twist factor, the angle, the deflection gets increased. So, these are the pros and cons of keys, but they are very, very useful machine elements and are to be designed with proper care. So, this is the end of this lecture. Thank you very much. We are discussing different kinds of fasteners and fasteners are non-permanent type joints where the members could be disassembled according to our will and without uh, damaging the component parts. So, threaded fasteners are one of the very important kinds of fasteners where of course, at, as the name suggests, there are threaded members. In today's machines, uh, most uh, of the machines will have different kinds of threaded fasteners. Normally, a rough estimate is that about 60 percent of the uh, machine elements are now threaded, uh, have threads, so um, and the fasteners types are threaded fasteners. So, we are going to discuss different kinds of threaded fasteners in today's lecture. First of all, let us see what are the different types of threaded fasteners. Now, the first name which comes is the bowls with nuts. Now, this is a very common type of threaded fasteners which all of us are acquainted with. Let me draw a rough diagram of the uh, this kind of threaded fastener.